question. For any makeup people out there, I'm not a makeup person. I don't understand how makeup works. I'm not good at it, but I really want to understand it. And I feel like I've searched this a million times and I don't know the answer. So, see these big bad boys? These bags. Bagalicious definition underneath my eyeballs. These Prada bags. These Gucci bags. These mama bags. I've earned these bags being a mother. And I'm proud of the bags under my eyes. But sometimes I want to be able to like camouflage them a little bit. And I know there are rules with like makeup where it's like, if you have purple undertones, use a green undertone and put on top of the yellow. And there's like color things. And I've looked it up and it's like uh, the color wheel. If you're trying to co cover up something, whatever the color is that you're trying to cover up on your face, like if you have red bags under your eyes or something, purple bags under your eyes, whatever, use the opposite color on the color wheel to cover it up. Makes sense, except I don't see a color. <laughs> I see bags under my eyes. Is that just something you just can't cover up? You just have bags under your eyes? But I've seen girls cover up bags under their eyes. But like, is there a color there? This to me it just looks like bags. So how do I know a color? Like I have color correcting like things, but I'm like, which color do I put under my eyeballs to make the bags look a little less prominent? I don't see purple. And then some people are like, well, it depends if you have yellow undertones in your skin or do you have pink undertones in your skin? Or do you have blue undertones in your skin? I don't know. I have a Caucasian human skin. So can someone help me? <laughs> because I don't know. They're like dark circles under my eyes and I don't know how to like, what do I do? Because I just put on foundation. I don't even use concealer. Like when I do use concealer, it's like the same color as my foundation because when I use lighter concealer, cause people always go like put a lighter concealer under your eyes. When I do that, I feel like under my eyes looks like gray or green or something. Like I don't feel like it looks right. So I know I'm using the wrong color. I don't know guys. I don't know what I'm doing. And I would love some help because I look tired. Okay, so see I have a concealer. I'm putting it on under my eyes and it's just like a little bit of a lighter color and I feel like it doesn't do anything. It just now looks like I have a lighter color under my eyes on top of my bags, but it doesn't like make the bags look less prominent. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like it looks the same. It just looks like different color bags. I don't know guys. I don't know how to do makeup. Also, whenever I try to contour my nose, like I see people like contour their nose, I usually have dirt on my nose. So I don't know how people do makeup and make it look so easy. If you hear Maisie crying in the background, she's with her grandma Nita and grandpa Yoda. She's a very happy little girl. Um, she she just is a very sensitive, dramatic little girl, and literally you can just be like holding her and adjust her to this side, and she's like, <coughs> um, she's very funny. Speaking of makeup, see, look, I feel like that looks horrible. Anyway, whatever cares. Okay, so speaking of makeup, something I wanted to talk about is eyebrows. If you know me and you've been watching me a while, you know I've been through a wild eyebrow journey, as most people have. My eyebrows, I have been made fun of for my eyebrows a lot in my life. In more recent years, it's been because like the shape of my eyebrows was like very like spermy if uh, to say the least I even did a whole like video about it like making fun of myself for having like sperm like eyebrows then I got made fun of a lot because like I would draw my eyebrows in so fiercely that it was like block eyebrows it was popular for like a second and I just did it too long and I still sometimes accidentally do that because I don't have the patience to do eyebrows the way you're supposed to do eyebrows but here's the deal the new like thing is to like just make your eyebrows like fluffy like that's the thing now it's like fluffy eyebrows everyone talks about fluffy eyebrows like natural looking Fluffy eyebrows, I'm using my lipstick today because I use it every single day. So fluffy eyebrows are a thing, but if you grew up in the 90s slash early 2000s, you can't have fluffy eyebrows because we plucked them all out. And if you pluck out your eyebrows enough, they don't grow back. So here's my eyebrow journey. And I just want to say this to all the girls out there who wish they had different types of eyebrows, okay? When I was a little girl, I had very thick eyebrows. And in fact, I think everyone says that like Flynn has Eric's eyebrows because Eric has very striking eyebrows. I love his eyebrows. But Flynn actually I think has my eyebrows. They're like my original eyebrow shape from when I was a little girl. They're like thick and very expressive. I think Maisie's gonna have them too. So I had like basically like a unibrow, like I had hair the whole way across, but they're really thick, which is really intense. And I got made fun of for them a lot growing up, like in school and whatnot. So then um, I got to high school and I was made fun of for them. So friend was like let me help you with your eyebrows and she plucked the heavens out of my eyebrows like plucked them so much plucked them so thin it was just like a literal line like the thinnest little just line of an eyebrow and that was what was popular at the time so I continued that look and I just kept plucking my eyebrows until now whenever I get my makeup done by a makeup artist they're always like oh did you pluck your eyebrows a lot in high school because I can tell because your eyebrows are a mess so now that the style is fluffy eyebrows I can't participate in this trend unless I put on 
on a bunch of makeup and make it look like fake eyebrows, like pretend eyebrows, because I don't have enough eyebrows to make the fluffy look. So I was on TikTok and there's a new filter that shows you what you would look like with paper thin eyebrows because everyone's been doing thick eyebrows for so long. I think that now that everyone's back into like the 2000s sort of 90s style, I think people are gonna start gravitating back towards that thin eyebrow look. And as a woman who grew up in the 90s and early 2000s, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't pluck out all your eyebrows. Don't do it. It is not a good idea. And it looks great. I'm not saying it doesn't look good. Like it all looks good. Have your eyebrows however you want. All of it looks fine. You're beautiful no matter what. But because trends come and go so much, like when I had big, fluffy, thick eyebrows, I was made fun of. But if I had those right now, people would be like, oh my God, I love your eyebrows. And now that I have thin, sparse, kind of weird eyebrows from plucking them so much, now that it's getting popular to have thin eyebrows again, I'm probably gonna be able to get back in style pretty soon. But trends come and go and it always recycles. So like whatever you have right now, if you think it's not in style, it will be soon, but don't pluck out all your eyebrows. But yeah, I saw that and I, I see all these girls making TikToks with that filter that makes them look like they have thin eyebrows and they're like, wait, I look so pretty with really, really thin, tiny eyebrows. And I'm like, you do look pretty. Of course you look pretty. You look pretty with any kind of eyebrows. But if you do that, you can't go back. Don't do it. Anyway, I'm gonna go draw on my eyebrows, bye. <laughs> Did you want a tour of my bathroom? No, but I'm gonna give you one anyway. All right guys, let's do a little tour of the bathroom. Um, yesterday in my vlog I said, someone commented on my bathroom and people comment on my bathroom a lot because I do have a very big, beautiful, fancy bathroom. People comment on it sometimes and want to see it. So I'm gonna show it to you. I have a very fancy big bathroom. It's very ridiculous. First of all, I'm playing with a necklace that my husband got me for Christmas. It's a little crystal Scorpio sign and it's so cute. So this this is a, oh my god, it's kind of messy, so this is a little embarrassing, but whatever. Okay, ready to, so here's my room. This is my bedroom. And then right in here is my bathroom. Look at that shower, it's wild. I remember the first time I saw this bathroom when I came and looked at the house before I bought it. I walked in this bathroom and I was like, this bathroom is like bigger than every apartment I've ever lived in. It's huge. So, um, we come in the bathroom. Bathroom tour. You come in the bathroom and the first thing you see, of course, is my pumping milk station. So in here we have frozen milk and in here we have not frozen milk. And here's my two bottle warmers and all my bottle parts. So in here is the his and her sinks. This is my side, as you can tell by my disaster of stuff. And here's Eric's side. So Eric's side has just, I won't show you because that's his private business, but but it's mostly um, face face sprays. Eric loves a face mist. On my side is um, my antidepressants, <laughs> my birth control. And we also have makeup remover. No one asked for this. I have a bucket of brushes and old expired makeup. I don't use any of these. Like I literally don't touch this. So I don't even know why I still have it in here. I have this scar removal stickers that my OBGYN recommended to help with my C-section scar. I don't know if they work. I haven't been using them for the last month, so I couldn't tell you if they did work or not. I think they were working at first. I don't know. I'm trying to like not be like, I wanna get rid of my scar because it's like a badge of honor. It's like a cool tattoo that like I went through that experience, but I don't know how I feel about it. Anyway, um, I have this bag of toiletries from when I went to Santa Barbara that's still just not unpacked. I ran, this is so random. I didn't even know this was here. I have this body lotion, which is like for my, Oh my God, that smells like college. I wear this all the time in college. Why do I have this? Is this from college? Um, basically everything over here I don't use. A dark spot corrector, like under eye corrector, don't use it. Clearly, I was this morning talking about bags and rants. I don't use creams or potions or anything. I have, I don't even know what the stuff is, guys. So I just basically have like a corner of stuff that I don't use. So that's what's over there. Then over here we have the bathtub um, with this rug that Eric bought. Here's our bathtub, which saved my life during my pregnancy. I loved taking baths. It really helped with my restless legs, with my sore body, and um, it just sucked I couldn't have hot baths when I was pregnant. They had to be like kind of just warm baths, which was no fun, but anyway. Next to the bath is all Flynn's toys, because this is, we do Flynn's baths in here. So he always gets to pick toys to take into the bath. So that's what all this is. And then bubbles and whatever. And then this is our bathroom where we go poo and pee and all the things. So it's dirt not clean in here. Toilet, fun, we have a bidet which I was very anti-bidet until I tried a bidet and then I was like, wait, this is amazing. But I was like, I don't want something squirting at my anus hole. And then when I tried it, I was like, this is glorious. Not something squirting at my anus hole, that's not bad. It just seems so much cleaner. I don't know, I really like it. And yes, if you were paying attention, you would see 
diapers. And that is because I used diapers right after I had the babies. And you might be thinking, well, Colleen, you had the babies four months ago. Why do you still have diapers? Well, since I have the babies, maybe this is TMI for some of you. If you don't like period woman area talk, fast forward a little bit. Real talk, since I had the babies, my period came back and it came back crazy. Strong, intense, not fun, just really, a lot. I put, busted out those diapers the last cycle I had because I was like, I was just, there was so much blood throughout the night. So I wore a diaper to bed and I'm not ashamed. I mean, I'm a little ashamed, but um, yeah. So that's why there's diapers out. And this is our big shower with all the lotions and potions inside there. Yeah, so we use the big waterfall one, but we do have like a handheld nozzle one that Flynn likes to use as a fire hose. And then we have another one that's like on the wall that we've literally never used. And it's also a sauna, which I only have used when I couldn't breathe during pregnancy. Um, when I had a hard time breathing, it like clear my sinuses. And also I use it whenever one of the kids gets sick or needs to be cleared out or sounds congested. It's like done wonders for that. So this is my really, really fancy pants bathroom. Room. It's always kind of a mess, but yeah, I just made baby's bottles. So I'm going to go give this to them. We'll see you guys a little bit later. Cheers. Okay, it's one in the morning. I'm about to make bottles for the night slash the morning. And I thought I would do a tortilla talk from in here. I have to be kind of quiet because the babies are sleeping right there. But uh, you guys asked some really fun questions on my vlog yesterday. So let's take a look. Haley said, tortilla talk question, something a little different than the normal baby questions. Which one of your nephew's niece does Eric connect or vibe with the most? Eric connects with and vibes with all the kids. Um, he gets along with all of them. He loves them all. I will say that like Luke's his little buddy. Like he obviously loves them all the same and they're all like besties, but Luke and him, like Luke like lights up when he sees Eric and he's like, oh, that's my little buddy. He's like my little man. But he does love them all very much and they all get along very, very well. He's a really special, like unique relationship with him. Every one of them. This is an interesting question. It's from Samantha. She said, Tortilla Talk question. When you have a hard day and you film the moment where you're talking with us and having a heart to heart, do you preface Corey about the footage? How does he process or handle seeing you have a hard moment? Corey's watching us right now, so he could just answer it. But sometimes I will just edit those parts of the vlog myself. Like if I have like a hard moment where I'm like crying a bunch or whatever, I'll just sometimes import it and just edit that chunk of the vlog by myself. Sometimes I'll text Corey and be like, hey, this part of the vlog, I just, I edited, or you don't have to edit this part of the vlog. Or I'll tell him that there's a hard part, or he'll just see that I'm crying and upset and we'll talk about it, or I've already talked to him about it. Like Corey's literally my best friend in the whole world. He knows everything about me and anything I'm going through in my whole life. He's always been there for me. He always gives the best, best advice. He's literally one of my soulmates. Like he's like everything. So he knows everything I'm already going through. So when I talk to you guys about stuff that's hard or, intense. Corey's already watching me go through it in real time and I've usually already talked to him about it and if I haven't and he sees the vlog footage of me talking about it, usually I walk in the room while he's editing and like just start talking to him about it and like cry to him about it. So yeah, I don't like, I don't know that I even answered that question but sometimes I tell him, sometimes I don't, sometimes I edit it myself. <laughs> Oh, this is a great question. Elizabeth said, George, can talk question? Hi, Colleen, I'm a medical student and I've heard you talk about how much you liked the care that you received from your OBGYN and your healthcare team with the twins. What specifically made this experience so excellent compared to the care you received with Flynn or just in general in the past? I'm trying to get all the tips I can to be a better health professional in the future. Well, first of all, I'm not a health professional, so I can't help you with that, with how to be a better health professional because I'm just an idiot. But I can't answer that question. I can tell you why I like um, my experience with my OBGYN and my entire health team. They listened to me. <laughs> and I don't think I'm smarter than doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals. I think they are the geniuses of our world. I don't even compare. Like, I don't think I'm smarter. But I don't like being dismissed. So if I have a question or a concern and I'm told that it's not, like, if it's just brushed aside, do you know what I mean? Like, that's really frustrating. So, like, when I was pregnant with Flynn, I would bring up a symptom and I'd be like, I'm in a lot of pain. Like, this is the most pain I've ever been in 
I'm in so much pain, like, is there anything you can do? And having my doctor be like, yeah, it's normal. Everyone does, everyone feels that. And then I was just like, there's no way everyone feels this. Like, this is the worst pain I've ever been in in my life. And I see other pregnant women that aren't in this much pain. So what's going on? And he was just very, he was just very dismissive of my feelings and what I was going through. It made me feel crazy. I felt crazy. It made me feel weak and lame and like I was stupid um, because every time I brought up any issue, he just would brush it off and blow it off. Like, that's not a big deal. And my current doctors do the opposite. They listen, they make sure I feel heard and understood. And there's a lot of like, gosh, that's so frustrating that you're in so much pain. You've got to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. And we're going to make you feel better. So it was just nice having someone say like, I hear you and I understand how hard and painful that must be. So let's figure out a solution. So yeah, I would just say like being listened to and having someone hear what I was going through and not make me feel like I was stupid was helpful. Like I just didn't like being talked to like I was stupid. If I had a question about something like, oh, why is this going on with my body? Or um, why is this going on with my kid or whatever? And someone treated me like I was an idiot. You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, like there were times where with my pregnancy, where my OBGYN didn't have anything that would help. Like she was like, yeah, it's just gonna be really painful, you know, or that there's nothing we can do about that. Even in those situations, she made me feel better because she would just be like, I'm so sorry. I wish I could help you with that. There's nothing we can do. And then she would explain why. She'd be like, when you're pregnant, this, this, and this is happening in your body. And with your body in particular, this is going on right now. And that's why you're feeling this way. Like she would explain it so I didn't feel stupid and she validate my feelings. So there's a lot of comments from people asking me to give an update on the babies and their like milestones that they're hitting and whatnot. And I actually filmed a video, a three month update video of them. And now they're over four months old. So that's how behind I am on my videos. <laughs> so in that video, I will like, I explain like where they're at and whatever a month ago, but they're like excelling and not, I don't wanna say excelling. They're just both doing different things at different times. Wesley is much more talkative and he can roll over. He can and hold toys and bring it to his mouth. These are all milestones. They both can track you and like they both get really excited when they see my face. <laughs> I feel very popular. Maisie's much better at head control and strength. Wesley's more talkative and Maisie's more strong, like physically. She can hold her head up. She's better at tummy time. Um, she has better balance and control, but he can roll over and he can talk a lot more and he can hold toys better. So those are kind of like their milestones, I guess right now. And and they're both not sleeping through the night. Wesley wakes up every three hours, no matter what I do. And he's eating way more than Maisie. They both are eating my breast milk and a little bit of my cousin's breast milk and a little bit of formula. Wesley's a lot more chill. Maisie's a lot more dramatic and emotional. They're both really freaking cute. And they both um, are very smiley right now, which is really exciting for me because Flynn was not like that. Flynn was a wonderful, perfect baby, but he had colic and he was really sad and I never got to experience him being a smiley happy baby all the time like I can remember all the moments where he was smiley and happy in the first three four months of his life because it was very few and far between so it's exciting that every day all the time they also like smile and giggle and talk to me I just I love it they're they're just so cute anyway I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of milestones but um that's all I'm gonna answer today thank you for all your tortilla talk questions please leave some more sorry my vlogs have not been you know you don't really see my day you just kind of see me talk to you in the morning and at night it's just while Eric's family's in town I'm just trying to enjoy family time with them and yeah so that's all I'm gonna say today and I'm gonna eat some chocolate and go to bed see you guys tomorrow maybe maybe not you can relax Colleen and Eric have a podcast the world is scary and we're locked in our home but now we have big microphones so you can relax that's the name of our podcast